All right, today I'm going to review Free Guy. It's a movie about a video game character, and he lives inside, well, a video game, but it's like a MMORPG. It's actually basically GTA Online the movie, <laughs> is what it is. If you're familiar with that game, you'd probably get all the references. And he's Ryan Reynolds, but his name is Guy, hence Free Guy. But while he's gaining sentience, basically, uh, in the real world, two programmers are slowly figuring out that, like, their code is actually in the game, and that's what's causing, um, these NPCs to gain sentience, and be the first AI ever, but it's all been stolen by this horrible boss, played by Taika Waititi, and he's actually pretty hilarious, despite also being horrible, but it's, uh, it's basically an adventure movie, but it's also, like, a an action romantic comedy sort of it has a lot of the tropes from both things it also gets kind of philosophical a little bit or existential maybe just in that it's all about these um npcs discovering that they're actually computer programs and everything without becoming the matrix or anything like that and i personally thought this was a great film that was fun the whole way through and might have said maybe more about being alive than most um than most like dramatic movies or things like that that are actually trying to say things about being alive that's something that like really surprised me all around about this film just that like it was way more than it needed to be i mean it really just had to be like some cartoony thing to entertain the kids basically but it was um but it succeeded on all counts and like like i said it it's like a romantic comedy but also an action comedy and a, just a comedy comedy and also like making fun of video games and like video game tropes and also gamers in general uh, and it's like saying all these things about gaming culture I guess and like but also still being a good story well told it, like it's a very surprising movie on all around it's actually one of my favorite movies from last year and and should win best picture despite not being up for it if, as far as I'm concerned because like like I said it just does so much and doesn't fall apart because of it you know and that's very hard to balance all these things together and still like tells like a really good story that's also a very entertaining movie that um i don't think a single second is wasted pretty much it's just like telling because it's telling two stories at once two or maybe even three if you want to like count like a side story or two and but it works on every level and that's something that's kind of it's just impressive that's that's more impressive to me than like any of the stuff they did in the dune pretty much just that they can like take so much and tell a story and make such a great story from it such a great movie from it it's just amazingly impressive <laughs> that they could do all this and also make it basically a video game movie and those are really hard to do well anyway i mean it's not te technically it's not really based on anything like, it has a lot of influences from gta online i think but it's still not gta online it's like doing everything GTA Online does without being that. And also just tells its own story. And like the only other movie I can like kind of consider it to is Wreck-It Ralph. Just in that they kind of do the same thing of making it about video game characters without basing it on any video game. And then they can just tell their own story. I'm a huge fan of video games, but I'm the first that'll tell you that video most video games movies just don't work. And I think that's mostly because, well, either A, they do it totally wrong, which can be awesome in its own way, like the Super Mario Brothers movie. So it's like so bad it's good type of thing. Double Dragon, I think, was another one that was also really bad, like so bad it's good type of movie. But they just like totally like in name only do these share uh, any similarities between each other pretty much though most of them are just horrible when they do that and the other ones which are also mostly just horrible are the ones that try too hard to copy the video game or the feels or like well how you feel in the video game they stay too hard too close to the formula and like video games and movies just aren't the same thing you know like for example leveling up um, might be really exciting when it happens to you in a video game but it's really boring to watch on screen <laughs> You know, I think they did a good job of, like, having the level-up montage about halfway through the film. Uh, that was, again, just like every other part of this movie. Just very entertaining to watch is about the only way you could show something like that. Like, I have to level up to level 100. Watch me do this for 40 hours. Like, nah. <laughs> most Let's Plays are better than most video game movies. <laughs> Even though they're, like, 50 times longer sometimes. Well, as a rain, I'll just give this a 10 out of 10, because like I said, it was one of my favorite movies from last year. And it's hard to do something like this, and I've heard there's already a sequel in the works, but I doubt they can do something as good as this. 
again. I mean, like, he made a sequel to Wreck It Ralph, you know, and like that was, I mean, it wasn't a piece of garbage, but also wasn't like nearly as good as the original. But that movie also had something to say about the human condition. The second movie just didn't, I felt, because the first movie was about self-acceptance. And this movie, I think, like the message, like the themes behind it are kind of cool, I think, just that it's mostly about feeling like you're a prisoner and having to break free or wanting to break free. I mean, hence free guy, the other part of the, <laughs> the, the title. And the, I guess the initiative and the drive you need in order to do that. And I think Guy is such a great character because he's like totally oblivious almost. But as, it, as the movie goes on, he becomes more and more aware of how things work and everything. But he still stays his happy-go-lucky self, pretty much. And I think that's where a lot of the comedy comes from. Just in that, like, no matter what you do to Guy, he's just as carefree about the whole thing as he was before. The action is also surprisingly good. I mean, it's a video game movie, but they, they definitely, like, worked really hard on it. It's always over the top to such a degree that it becomes even more fun because of it. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but, like, every action scene is just so great. It really is. Uh, and a lot of the comedy, that's the other thing, like, the comedy is very fluid throughout the movie. And it has just the right amount of comedy, I think, too. And I think a lot of it was improvisational, and you can kind of tell, but, like, not all of it. Yeah, I would say, overall, this was a very fun film. Lots of great comedy. Action-packed, but that wasn't the driving force of the film, which is another thing that I was surprised about. You know, usually in action movies, it's, like, these over-the-top action scenes that are what you remember. But mostly I remember, like, some of the, some of the deeper moments, like, uh... Like, there's some great things. He has a, this buddy at the bank. His name is Buddy. He's his best friend, but, like, he, he has some of the best lines in the whole movie. I, I wish I could remember any of them, or uh, I'd butcher them anyway, so I'm not, I'm not even gonna try. But. He was a great character, I think, just in general. I mean, they're all great characters, and that's the other thing. Like, all the characters are really well-drawn. I mean, you can have a good story without having well-drawn characters, but none of these people were caricatures. Not even the NPCs, where some of them are, like, cardboard cut cutouts and everything, but everyone seemed to have like a distinct personality even when they were just minor characters you know like a uh, character that's springing to mind right now is like there was the, this barista and <laughs> i just remember at one point he's like i'll have a cappuccino and everyone freaks out he's like everyone always has coffee two two creams two sugars or whatever it is and he's like kidding and then later on he's like give me this racial speech he's like you know i can make i can make it he's like cappuccino and then she's like i can make a difference it's like that's way better <laughs> or something it was something like that but it was um just like a great like character building moment even though you don't really see this character outside of these uh short scenes pretty much and it had a lot of stuff like that i actually i'm kind of excited for the sequel i would say just in the hopes that they can do more with the characters that they've already established and not just make it like you know overblown sequel like they always do and that's probably what they will do and and totally forget what what made this for mo movie good and just fill it full of stupid garbage <sighs> I don't have hopes, <laughs> but I do at the same time. Maybe they won't screw it up. Um, but yeah, I gave this a 10 out of 10 already, and I'll reiterate that I did that. And uh, just say like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Goodbye. I don't know why I'm waving now.